Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now, today's episode, I'm going to walk you through how to specifically pay your federal taxes due to Uncle Sam with a credit card. So we'll briefly retouch on, you know, why you would want to do this, how it works. And we're going to spend the majority of our time at the computer together walking through me paying my federal taxes with a credit card. So if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button and let's get to work. Now, first things first. This is probably our third tax video, I think, so I'm pretty sick of taxes. I don't know about you, but the other two videos will be linked down below. Those two videos cover what is taxable specifically in this game of credit and finance as far as points and sign-in bonuses and things like that go. The other video is when it makes sense to pay your taxes with a credit card. I go through all the different tax scenarios between you know state, federal, city, property tax and tell you if you can or can't pay with a credit card. So if you want more detail on that, those will be the first links down below in the um, the description right under the like button this one specifically we're going to talk about paying my federal taxes so let me give you a brief summary here now of course obligatory not tax advice and i'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about my taxes very little but number one because it's boring and number two I use TurboTax. I am in no way qualified to talk to you about how I really arrived at my final tax number with any level of clarity um, and I'm just going to be honest about that you should take advice for the credit cards, not the taxes. So anyways, I used TurboTax and you know, the number before write-offs and everything was I think about five or $6,000 to the federal level. Now after write-offs and everything, I got that number down to about 800 bucks. And you know that largely has to do with you know the channel. I think we made $4,000 here last year, but I definitely spent more than I made. MacBook Pro alone was like 3,500 bucks. So I write off a lot of that stuff and then I got it down to $800 again through TurboTax. Now, I also owe at the state level as well, I think 100 bucks. and luckily enough, I'm an employee in the city of Detroit, so I have to pay taxes there, but they actually owe me a refund of almost $400. So not too bad that they'll just mail me the check. Now, the thing about this, and again, more detail down below is, there are very few instances when this makes sense. So with federal taxes, there it's very easy, as I'm going to show you in a second. We'll go to the IRS site, and then there are three different options to pay with a credit card, and they have a processing fee of about 1.87%, I think is the lowest one, but we'll double check that in a second. So that means for this specific use case, I'm only doing this one because I have a card, the Ink Premier, I just got the card, but it gives me 2% back on all purchases. And I have a full video on the ink premiere that I'll link down below. So that works. And you'll see we'll be in the black by the slimmest of margins, but it works. And number two, you know, honestly, we just need something to talk about. So this seemed like a good as video as any to make, if I'm being super honest with you. But most of the time for that little margin is probably not worth the hassle. I probably would have just ACH if I couldn't make a video about it. Now, state taxes for me, you can pay state taxes with a uh, credit card. But I checked uh, Michigan is at a 2.35% processing your convenience fee, as they call it. So, again, that would not make sense in this specific use case of my Inc. Premier. Again, more use cases down below in that video. Go check it out. And of course, the city, um, city of Detroit, they always they only take check, but luckily they owe me a check, so that's all good. So without further ado, there's only so far we can get by talking about it. So we're gonna jump over here. We're gonna go directly to the IRS's site. I'm gonna walk you through, it, and then we'll come back here and recap it. All right, guys, and so here we are. When you start, you just want to always go to the irs.gov. That's the site. You can see an official website of the United States government. I can only imagine how many scam sites there are out here, so it's always a good place to start. But it's time to get to work. So we have the toolbar here, so definitely we want to go to payments and then pay by debit or credit card. Now, you do have some additional information up top, but this takes you right to where you need to be. Um, so the IRS uses third-party payment processors, which is basically what we talked about in the beginning. Now, the only one here you really want to pay attention to is number three. There's a maximum number of card payments allowed based on your tax type and payment type. So really quick here, we're going to pop this into another window. So most of us are going to be doing the Form 1040. Um, so you can see payment type and tax year and then the limit you have here. So really just keep that in mind if you're planning on making multiple payments across multiple cards. But again, you know, you do have other payment processors as well that you can choose between now I hope this doesn't affect most people. I think only Elon Musk at this point is going to have to worry about this. I wonder what card he uses to pay his taxes. Um, all right, so here we go. 
these are the payment processing options that we talked about at the beginning so you have three of them you can see you know if you're paying by debit card they have a flat fee or a percentage and you can see as well what um, payment methods they take so most of these take the the main ones visa mastercard discover amex anything like paypal as well so if you know if the chase category was paypal that could potentially be an option for you now what you want to do is honestly just pick the the cheapest one to start with so for us pay 1040 1.87 percent is obviously better than 1.98 or 1.96 but you can tell even if you had a two percent card which is what we have the ink premier is giving us two percent back you know it's diminishing returns but again you're still all over the threshold so let's go ahead let's start here make payment you can see this launches us basically into the pay 1040 site through the irs and again, they're giving you the uh, the fees there. Um, so you can do personal or business. They also have the tax state as well. So pay personal taxes here, and then this is going to take us through the full process. So from here, again, they're they're calling it a convenience fee. I guess it's convenience fee. But let's get started plugging the information on. So this is um, tax purposes, the form. Again, most of you are probably going to be doing a 1040, but if not, choose your form from there. Um, I don't know why this says optional, but since it's their current tax return for the year of 2021, because remember, it is technically backwards. Now, the payment amount, you know, you're going to have to get that from your um, taxes. I pulled it off of TurboTax, so just for my federal, it's 779 So plug that in that. Of course, you're within the U.S. Check here if you've received notice. Um, I have not received any notice, so we will move on. So now here we go. This is where you're going to enter in your personal information. So um, social security number, that's, you know, for identification purposes. Obviously, basically just like you were filling out a credit card. This is like the exact same information so i'm going to fill this in and skip ahead because if not it would just be you know blacking everything out so i will rejoin you shortly okay and through the power of video editing we are together again so you can see taxpayer information completed again it's just like if you were filling out a regular application for a credit card um, or a bank account so now we're on the payment section that is in process um down here i, I just have it blacked out because again it's got your card holder billing address but this is where you're going to put in your card information. So for me, it's going to be the Inc. Premier. So let me type this in, and then we will jump on to the next section together. All right, guys, and one more time, here we are. Payment information is complete. Now, most of this is just kind of showing you your information to review. That's why it's all blacked out. But right here at the top, you can see my payment amount, $779. You can see convenience fee, that 1.87% is going to be $14.57 .14 for the grand total right there. But this sheet is basically just so you can you know, review your information that you plugged in. So go ahead and do that. And then I will show you if we schedule, scroll down to the bottom here, where I don't have to black it out. These are kind of just like the things to accept. So, you know, we're, of course, we're going to accept it. Direct marketing privacy consent. So do we have consent to share transfer your email address to our affiliate third party? No, I get enough emails. Do we have your consent to share transfer email to affiliate vendors in order to carry out direct marketing? Of course not. Um, and then just like that, you're going to process the payment. And so there we have it. It processes this very quickly, and then you end up at this screen, which is a receipt. Now, I also it did get an email as well. I can see down below, um, but I would always, always print this out. I'll do it right after with this, but overall, that's it. I'm um, pretty easy to do, and now Uncle Sam should be satisfied, so let's flip it back around and close this one out. Okay, guys, and so there you have it. That was paying my federal taxes with a credit card. Now, you know, be honest here, for a government process and a government website, that really wasn't that hard at all. Now, I do want to make one more note. I think I forgot to mention in the beginning. I use TurboTax to do my taxes. It's not a plug or anything. It's just what I use. When you close out of TurboTax, you'll, you'll have when you're done, they'll have the option to e-file it, and then they'll if you owe money, they'll say, hey, you know, do you want to send a check, ACH, or even pay your credit card through TurboTax? Um, if you want to use your credit card, do not do it through TurboTax because when I did it, I should have screenshotted this, but I think the TurboTax processing is about 2.75%, something like that, which is obviously higher than going directly um, through the uh, through the IRS processing systems. 
So what I did was I just checked that I would mail a check in TurboTax and they said, okay, cool, you're responsible for that. And then obviously we just went to the IRS site. Now for state, again, since it's 2.35% for me, I just did an ACH for my bank account through TurboTax. There is no fee for that. So, But overall, again, I think it's pretty easy, you know, for a government site, not too bad. Again, we were able to, you know, get in the black a little bit, a little bit of a margin there, take advantage of a 2% card. So, you know, if you watch all the videos combined, I think you have a full understanding of how at least how credit cards and taxes can go together um, but of course I want to turn it over to you guys let me know what you think down below is this something you're going to consider doing for your tax bill this year I would love to hear your thoughts on that anyways guys if you like this one drop me a thumbs up down below if you found it particularly interesting consider subscribing to the channel again posting content just like this every Monday Wednesday and Friday and of course right back every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance again my question for you guys is let me know how you pay Uncle Sam do you find it that it's worth it with a 2% car just for that tiny bit of margin or what's your strategy but anyways guys thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you very soon in the next one